Hello everyone, this is Devin Adams. I'm a Fortnite instructor here in Tempe, Arizona, and I record these videos for my students. And uh, the last video, we we're showing how we can create a primary link in our in our load balancing traffic demo here, and how we can set the different distances to make sure that only one link is active at a time. Now, why would we want to do this instead of the equal cost multipathing? In all reality, uh, the biggest scenario that I can think of is that if this port one WAN link here was a ginormous pipe that the majority of our pass our traffic passed through, right? We'd want to make sure that the majority of it or all of it goes through there. And maybe this port two, which is a second WAN connection, might just be some kind of redundant smaller pipe that, you know, as long as that first pipe is good to go, we don't need that second pipe. So um, what's really nice about the last scenario was it forced every session to stop using that WAN 2 in case WAN 1 came back up. So because sometimes they can get stuck there. Um, but let's go ahead and take a look at something different here. And we're going to talk about the different equal cost multipathing load balancing algorithms that are available on the FortiGate itself. So now someone mentioned in the comments how um, the SD-WAN is the way better solution for this, and they are right. So the SD-WAN is a free service, a part of the FortiGuard uh, package there. And they've actually done SD-WAN for a while now. They've just rebranded it. It used to be called the WAN Link Load Balancer in 5.4, and I actually have videos on it. Um, in the class. So a lot of the link health checks and a lot of the uh, priority rules and things like that that we're going to talk about here do have a graphic user interface equivalent and it's not as convoluted. So, But then again, it's also not very intuitive. So that's why we're going to do videos about it. So it is definitely coming up. All right. So uh, but let's go ahead and say, hey, you know what, maybe maybe our WAN2 here is another connection that we want to use all the time, all right, and we just want to balance traffic between the two. So I'm going to go into my Windows 1 machine here, and I'm going to log in. I thought that was booted up, guys, sorry. All right, so what is my password? Here we go. And then we are going to log into the, the FortiGate. So let's get a web browser here. All right. Let me close out some windows. And it might just take a second to, to boot up. So, okay. So let's go ahead and go to 10.10.1.254. We should get a login prompt. Oh, no, it's not trusted. We might fix that later on one of these days. All right, there we go. Okay. Now, I did the LDAP bind, so I should just be able to use my Windows credentials. That's so nice. All right. There we are. And uh, so right now, let's take a look at what we have going on. So if we go to our network and we take a look at our static routes, you're going to see here that we have our primary WAN and our backup WAN, distance 10, distance 20 and what this does is that it forces one to be used at a time all right so if this ever goes down right the highest one the highest it's kind of weird because it's like golf right so the highest priority is the one that has the lower distance so this won't become active but once this comes back to life it'll kick it back in but if we want to participate in the equal cost multipath load balancing, they have to have the same distance and the same priority. So we're going to come back here and do 10. All right, there we are. Okay. And everything's done through the CLI. So once again, guys, the SD-WAN is a better option for this. Okay. And we're going to migrate to it here shortly. But let's go ahead and take a look at those um, load balancing algorithms in our CLI. So let me pop this open. We'll do a config system settings. All right, there we go. And then it's going to be set v4 ECP mode question mark. All right, so these are the different algorithms that we have. So the default is going to be source IP address. So anything that comes from the same source IP address is going to go out the same WAN port. All right, because of the limited amount of machines in our environment, I changed that to source destination. So each different source and destination pair would choose a different hop 
all right? Now, the two that we haven't really played with is weight and usage based, okay? And we're gonna pretend like, hey, you know what? I wanna use that backup connection because we're paying for it and we might as well pass traffic to it. That's kind of like our scenario, all right? But we want the majority of it to go down the primary and not so much of it to go down the secondary, but still participate in load balancing. So we can use these two. Now let's talk about them for a second. So the weight based is where we can put a number either on a route or an interface, okay? And that number is the probability that it will be selected during the process of picking which path to choose. So for example, if I do a 10 weight on our static uh, route, with our primary and then I do a one based off of our secondary routes, okay? There's a 10 to one chance that the primary will be picked over the, the, the backup, okay? So that's one way that we can do it. The other way that we can do it though is usage. And when they say usage guys, it's also known as spillover. That is actually done through bandwidth. So if you think about it, it's kind of like, hey, if we hit a certain bandwidth threshold, go ahead and spill over and start using the other interface, okay? So, and that is only done by interfaces. So let's go ahead and try these, all right? So I'm gonna go ahead and, and you can do interface or routes on the weights based, but I am gonna go ahead and I am going to uh, use the routes, why? Why not? <laughs> so here we go, it's either or here. So let's go ahead and say set mode to wait. All right, and then we'll commit. And then after that, we have to do our config router static. All right, and then if I do a show here, you can see all of our static routes. So I'm gonna do edit one, and if you remember right, that is our primary WAN. So I'm gonna go ahead and set a weight of the number, and it's, it's zero to 255. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna do a weight of 10, okay? And I should have done the next there. Now I'm gonna have to do it all over again. But let's go ahead and hit up the other route. So let's do a config router static. Let's edit our second route and we'll do a show here just to show you, all right? But we're gonna set a weight of one, all right? And so remember guys, there's a 10 to one chance that it's gonna pick the primary over the secondary, all right? So set weight. And we're going to set that to one. All right, and we'll do an end to commit. And that should be it. It should be load balancing now based off of a weighted ratio. So, um, so how do we test this in our lab environment? So we can go to our Ford view and we can look at our all sessions. So this is our live session table. And we have a destination port, destination interface right there. So we're gonna take a look at that destination interface. How often do you guys see no sessions at all through the FortiGate? <laughs> that kind of makes me nervous. All right, let's go ahead and see if we even have internet connectivity. All right, so uh, here I'll just Google something stupid. All our, oh, it looks like it's working. All our base, whatever. All right. So let's hit a refresh here. And as we can see, two, 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 one, 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 two, 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 one, 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 one. So yeah, sure, it's distributing traffic, but guys, honestly, I always thought it was a, and this is just me personally looking more into it, I always thought that it was a true ratio like if you did like a two to one or a five to one, it actually randomly generates a number. And then if that number falls on one interface, it picks it. And if that number randomly falls on the other one, it picked the other. So it's, it's more of a randomization thing. And it's more of a 10 to one chance instead of an actual 10 to one distribution. So yes, it should be using that port one more per session but there's not as much control as we would get if we did do the SD-WAN, but that was one way. Now we could essentially come back here if, if we did not like the amount that it was hitting that and set the weight even higher on that other route. So why don't we try that? So let's do a, um, let's see here, config router static. All right, let's edit our route or edit one, actually, my bad. And then I'm gonna do a show here just to see the weight. 
But here I'm going to set the weight to maybe 100, all right? So now there's a 100 to 1 chance. Let's go ahead and go somewhere else. Are you guys ready? Let's go to the dirtiest website on the planet. Not really, but Bing.com generates so many sessions. It can No, it's not Bing. My bad. It's MSN. Can generate so much sessions because of their dynamic content. It can be a little silly. So let's go ahead and refresh this. And we should see the majority of it being port one. All right, see that guys? All right. And that's just because we set that threshold so much higher than we did than the secondary. So once again though, we will essentially get to the point where um, look at that, we set it too high now. We can use the SD-WAN and get more intelligence out of it. But look at that, 72 sessions for one web page. Good times there, Emerson. Okay, so let's go ahead and say, hey, you know what, that's great, uh, but let's try the actual threshold instead, usage. And this is gonna be good when you have fixed bandwidth on your interfaces. All right, so let's go ahead and change the load balancing algorithm now to our uh, usage base. So we're going to do a config system settings, right? And then we're going to set the V4 ECMP mode to usage based, all right? And then you have to do this by interface. So we'll do a config system interface. We're going to do edit port one, all right? And here we're gonna do a git. And somewhere in here you'll actually see the spillover threshold. It's somewhere there, there we go. So you see how it's set at zero now? Now this is measured in kilobits, all right? So, uh, and it is bandwidth. And because we are just trying to generate traffic and, and simulate it here, I'm going to say that the spillover is going to be, if it ever hits, I don't know, um, 500 kilobits per second. Now, in reality, if you had something like a 400 megabit pipe, you'd probably want to set that to, to 40,000 or whatever KP PS it is. So, but let's go ahead and do it. So set spillover. All right, threshold, and we'll just do 500. All right. So if it hits 500 KPS, it should use that port too. So I'm going to go here and I'm just going to download something. So let's go to uh, uh, download, if I can spell Ubuntu or something. Here we are. And I'm just going to download up ISO and get it going and, and have it consume our bandwidth here. So here we are. Thank you for choosing Ubuntu. You are welcome pay now there we go so and as you can see it, it should take more than well maybe not geez that's awfully slow <laughs> unless they cap it um, I guess I can also do make internet noise here too uh, and generate some traffic but essentially once that pipe hits guys it should fall over to the other one and how do we test this out is obviously looking at our session table okay All right, and maybe we can't even generate that much. Now remember, we do have link health checks here, so we can go to SD-WAN monitor and essentially see that we're not really utilizing much of our upload and download. See, I'd probably have to set the threshold to lower. Well, okay, sure, let's set it to lower. I've actually never used it outside of the SD-WAN. All right, I usually just do the source and destination. So let's do a config system interface. You know what? We might actually have to do the second one too. So why don't we try that? Um, config port two or edit port two. My oh, bad. <laughs> don't misspell stuff, guys, in, on the FortiGate. I just created a new interface, unfortunately. All right. Let's try that again. Edit ports two. There we go. And let's set the spillover threshold 
to maybe 10. Maybe you have to do both before I'll actually start using them. I'm not too sure. I've never tried it before. So, but we should be getting random traffic here. All right. Always allow pop-ups. Is it still downloading Ubuntu? Yes, it's taking a million years. Let's make some more noise. Let's see if we can't get it to distribute to that second one. No, it's still not hitting it. Maybe it's still too high for our little lab environment. In reality, you shouldn't have a problem hitting that at all. I just can't get that much traffic to generate. So let's do a config system interface. Let's edit our ports one. And let's set our spillover to 50K. <laughs> okay, sure. Will that start doing it? Can I just not get that kind of utilization? Oh, there we go. Jeez, about time. So, yeah, it was just too hard to distribute traffic or to generate traffic in my, my lab environment, guys. But essentially what's going to happen here is it's going to use this pipe, right, until it hits a certain bandwidth, and then it's going to fall over to this pipe until it hits its threshold, and then it'll go back over here, and then hit this one and back and forth. So that second one is going to be more beneficial. Once we have, see how it fell through? Uh, once we actually have um, bandwidth caps that we have to utilize. So that would probably be a little bit more in, more uh, intelligent in the sense of, you know, getting traffic to mainly use the one instead of the two. But just remember by default, guys, it does do source, all right? So, um, and honestly, if you have a FortiGate and you are paying for the support license, you're gonna see in the next labs, all right, that the SD-WAN is really the better option. I'll kind of explain what that is. But in this video, we did explore the two other load balancing algorithms, and we did get the majority of our traffic to pass through our primary. So, all right, guys, I'm gonna end it there because of it, this is obviously has gone on too long. And hopefully the person that I'm making this for, that is a little bit helpful. But I'll see you guys in the next couple of videos. And uh, yeah, I'll see you guys then. So, peace.